Hey, welcome back to Abby's Den. So um, I've been teaching people sewing for years, hundreds of students, kids, adults, all sorts of ages, girls, boys, men. And um, one thing I've found is that practice sheets are brilliant. Working on paper is so easy because it doesn't flop around when you're sewing it. So what I've done is I've printed um, these off for myself just to demonstrate, but I've also put them on a blog, which I'll put the link in the description below. Go and have a look at them. You can either copy them yourself onto paper, you can print them off, you can draw them onto fabric. I would suggest you use paper first, even if you've been sewing for hundreds of years like me, um, because it good practice to hone in on your skills and if you're new you know make yourself some easy to follow patterns and then you can use this as a template we've got Easter coming up so why not make something nice and fun and easy right okay so let me show you so these lines um start at the dot try and sew a stitch line going all the way from one end to the other do that a few times now even though I've drawn some dotted lines here what you could do is get from there draw another dotted line uh, a sewing line and get yourself all the way to the other end or for yourself and um, practice um, hitting a target from that end to that end trying to sew a straight line and it's really good practice to do some pivoting so you leave your needle in turn and then sew Try and hit the corner, put your needle in, and if you overshoot, you know to practice more. And these are really good skills for you. Okay, so we're gonna set the machine up to a straight stitch. So we want a straight stitch set up. We're gonna set the machine to a um, stitch length three. So that's three millimeters for those of you who want to understand what these numbers are. That's three millimeters. So if you go a little bit between three and four, you're three and a bit millimetres. You don't have to be exactly three millimetres, four millimetres, two millimetres, it doesn't matter. Again, with the stitch width, um, we're not doing a zigzag, so we don't need it to be wide. Now, if you look closely on there, there's a little oval. That oval represents the oval of the machine foot. So see that little oval you can see on that machine foot there? That's where the needle, that dot, um, represents where that needle is gonna hit in that oval. Let's pop that back. So we want that all the way down to zero because at zero, it shows us the oval with the dot right in the middle. We're gonna set the tension. We, know, we don't ever really need to play with the tension. Don't ever really mess about with it. It's set on auto. If you're clever enough, you can see that we've got three there. We've got the auto and the five, that means it's set to four. Now again, it's just a screw, it just helps us give us a guide of how um, tight the spring inside is holding this top thread. Okay, watch my other video, the first video on introducing this machine to show you how to thread the machine up. And you can see here, I've got two different colors. I've got red on the top and blue at the bottom. All right, so I found some uh, straight lines and you can see here that I have dots at the top, no lines, and then we've got our bar at the bottom. So we're going to be targeting achieving that goal. So let's start with that. Now, if it, this gets a bit too much, why don't you chop the paper in half, which I've done in the past. But what we're gonna do is we're going to try and hit that needle. See how it's now in the center because we moved it over. We're going to place the presser foot down and in between that gap there, in between those toes, so we'll call these the toes of the foot, and in between we can see a tiny gap. I've just move it around, so hold the presser foot at the back until you're quite comfortable with that sitting in the middle. Now we're going to pull the needle down, so turn the hand wheel, and get that needle in there so you're prepared and ready and very gently we're gonna start pressing on to our pedal, but I'm gonna show you how I like to hold my paper. I'm gonna hold the paper here, okay? So pull it out, don't stretch it. The thing about paper is you will tear it if you pull it, and that's great practice for you because you don't wanna be pulling at your fabric. Let's zoom back in. I'm gonna go nice and steady. So this helps you get control of your foot 
of the pedal and the paper is easy to work with. And when we hit the other end, we can stop. Okay, lift that needle out. Now, remember, this is really important. We want this hook at the top. So turn the hand wheel towards you and make sure that it's at the highest point. Then lift up the press foot and we can remove our fabric. Whoa, let's go that way. Okay, hook that thread around the cutter and snap that away. Okay. Actually, that's not too bad. When I'm rushing, that would have been all over the place. So that's not too bad. I'm going to have a go at this one here. I'm going to start anywhere in the circle. Just make sure my threads are pushed to the back so they don't nest underneath. Let me just show you the blue underneath. Okay. If you don't pull your threads to the back, you can get a nesting. That's um, lots of tangles of thread there. Okay. So make sure we pull our threads to the back. We're going to try and get that line. Oh no, we're doing the other one. So make sure you get that line. Go back at the start of the video and watch that again if you need help with that. Make sure those threads are at the back. Get anywhere in that dot. I'm gonna do a straight line all the way down. Okay, we're gonna hit that bar at the bottom. So we're gonna put the needle in and then gently go forward. stop at the bar in the bar there you go okay that's good practice it really is we don't want to overshoot make sure we get the hook to the top and remove that up. there we go not too bad not too shabby yeah make it have been sewing before haven't i okay so that's some good practice for straight stitching should we have a go at the curvy one we're just going to go with the two curves there so how do we do this because we're going to go along a curve so we're going to go at an angle we're not going to put the fabric in like that um or the paper let's untangle that okay we're going to go with that line okay so we're going to angle our paper so that the line is going to be going forward remember stitches are straight they're not curvy so we're going to have to work with this fabric or paper okay nice and gentle let's go for it so we'll go nice and slow and that's why it's so good to hold the paper at the end Okay, don't be frightened of stopping. If you get too sharp, the corner gets too sharp, you can pivot. And don't go past. If I do another stitch, will I stay in the bar? Yes, I will. Okay, hook to the top, and then you can release that. If it doesn't release easily, just uh, move the hand wheel to and fro a little bit. Let's have a look at that. That's not too bad, is it? zoom out a little bit that's not too bad and the blue line at the back and we have no nesting at the top so always make sure those threads are at the back okay again with the rabbit now what can we do with this hang on a minute right i found some fabric this is quite a cute fabric so i thought why not let's turn this rabbit into a toy so um this fits almost exactly now you can see i'm putting my fabric good sides together so i folded it over it's very tricky to put um to put needles or pins into this paper and into the fabric so 
and this is especially great for kids so what we can do is let's just get rid of what we don't need place that on there and I have some masking tape which I can just stick this down Oops. put a little bit there you don't always have to buy expensive pins and notions and things um, but masking tape will do the job perfect but when we've had lots of sewing practice on our worksheets and you can download them again in the link below what we're going to do is we're going to sew around here now you'll see at the bottom here i've got a turning hole because we're going to want to turn the rabbit right round so that we've got the good side on the outside so what we're going to do is we're going to start at one end of the turning hole go all the way round and stitch until we get to the other end and this is where we're going to need to lock our stitches okay what we've got here is our reverse button now this reverse button can you see how it shows a u-turn if i press that down there's a spring inside it so it's going to lift back up if i let go like that and the whole machine vibrates so i'm going to have to hold that down when i go back to lock my stitches so this line here I'm going to make sure I can see that in the foot. Yeah, you can see it in the window of the foot. Okay. There you go. All right. So then, like we did before, we're going to start with the needle inside the fabric. Move that thread to the back. Let's make sure the blue is at the back as well. Bing fiddling about I'm going to go three steps forward one two three stitches it doesn't matter if you do too many we're going to hold down the reverse button and go back one two three okay and then we're going to continue on And then we've practiced our pivoting so we're really good at this we leave our needle in the fabric and then pivot around so that we get our line following uh, the foot okay so the foot following the line and at this stage you've practiced lots of curves as well haven't you Take your time. Okie doke. Can't see that red very clearly, but we can see the blue. So we are definitely stitching. We're going very, very slow, but it's good. Another corner. gonna overshoot it no managed to catch that let's 
just make sure the fabric underneath is okay. Okie doke back to our last pivot and we're going to lock our stitches again so when we get to the end we're going to go all the way to that bar we're going to go back three and forward three to lock those stitches okay i can just about see it so i'm going to go um i'm going to press that reverse button down i'm not going to go that was three one two and three okay whoa hook all the way to the top lift up the press foot and then we can remove our fabric and our paper let's just get rid of that sewing machine for a minute switch it off when you're not using it because you might have an accident and we don't want that okay let's remove our paper now so if you've done a good job it should come away pretty easily Oops. Okay. Okay, there we go. So you can see the rabbit now, hopefully. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut around that rabbit because we've got extra fabric that we don't need, but we're not going to cut too close. We're going to leave about a centimeter. Now, what does a centimeter look like? So about that much away. So. give you an idea of how far we want to be and then okay so you can see that now can't you so we've got a nice blue stitching and we've got our black all the way around it so I'm going to cut away the fabric we don't need There we go, get rid of all that stuff. And there's our rabbit, which is so cute. Okay, we need to do some more cutting and this is what we call uh, clipping and snipping because if we turn this round, we're going to get a lot of fabric trying to get into that neckline. Um, and if I show you, let's see if I can show you. Do, 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 there we go. So let me show you what happens if I try to turn it around without the clipping and the snipping. Okay, where is our rabbit's neck? I've got my dowel, which is sharpened with a sharpener. Stick. It's just use a regular pencil sharpener on the stick. So you can see I can't get the pointy bit of the rabbit's ear out and here's the neckline. You can see how it's all pleating up. Okay, because there's too much fabric trying to come out in that space. 
and so we need to snip it but just look at the difference it's going to make when, when we've snipped it all okay and clip all this all this fabric has got to fit into that tiny little corner and that's not going to work very well so let's just use our stick to smooth out all the corners again Use the blunt side so we don't make any holes right so what we want to do I've got a pair of cuticle scissors here because I find they're the sharpest the expensive embroidery machine the expensive embroidery scissors don't do the work so a cheap pair of two pound cuticle scissors work great so you want to cut close to the stitching like that but not into the stitching okay So what happens then, if I pull that uh, stitching, I can get a straight line, okay? I can see that there's a little um, bit of a kink there, so I'm going to do that again, just one more, and I can get a straight line. If I can get a straight line, if I can make that row of stitching straight, then I know I've done a good job. So I'm gonna cut into that, right into that corner there, but not too close see the red stitching much better and um, can you see how that's almost a straight line so I'm going to do a couple more sti um, clips here try that again oh that's perfect okay nice straight line you might find it easy to lay your fabric on the table when you do this don't um, have your scissors too far over the stitches if you go too far you might accidentally cut into the row of stitches okay I'm just going to do one more there and I think that's pretty good and clip around his nose so we don't have too much fabric trying to get into one tiny space so whenever you have curves, that's where you want to cut and corners, take all that fabric away. You don't need that. Again, on this corner, you don't need all that fabric there. And maybe just a few clips here. Okay, so we've got a nice straight line there ish straight line and a straight line so I'm happy with that so really I should be able to pull all this out really well it comes out much easier now if you have a pointy stick, uh, stick like I said I used a piece of dowel which I've used a pencil sharpener to sharpen the end so you don't have to make it too sharp so um, you don't accidentally pierce through your fabric where you're stitching so can you see how now we get a beautiful pointy ear there look at that beautiful okay and let's see how we are with his nose we hopefully so we just curve around his nose if you stitch that well you'll get a nice curvy nose which don't seem to be around his chin and his front legs and body did I clip that? I thought I did
So I don't think I've cut enough away from that side, which I can go back in and clip some more. There we go. All right. And then if you've got some stuffing, you can stuff your rabbit. And you can glue some eyes on there. I'll just show you how to finish the edge of this rabbit that I've made. What we're going to do is got a needle and thread. Try and get a small needle. I think this is a little bit on the big side. Get your needle into an, the seam if you can. So if you've pressed your project, what you want to do is try and get into the seam like that. There we go. And then we're going to start working away up what we call this uh, and this is known as a ladder stitch or at least that's what I call it and what we're going to do is we are on one side of the fabric of the rabbit and we're going to go over to the other side so what we want to do is we want to work our way into the fold and move up the fabric inside that fold and we're going to go into the fold like that and pull that thread through. What we're going to do next is go across like a ladder rung to the other side, fabric, and we're going to go up the fabric like that. And we're going to go across back to the other side. the fabric and pull. Come back to this side again into the fold up the fabric so can you see how it's making a ladder into the fabric into the fold do that again on this side into the fabric across now you might want to do smaller stitches in this but I think this makes it easy for you to see See? See how we're creating this ladder? So, match it on the other side, go up, come out. Match it again. all the way up and then we're at the other end okay duck and then the satisfying part is when you get to the end and you give it a nice pull okay so you can see if you do small stitches you don't get so much of a wrinkle and you won't get holes but because this is a toy I'm not worried too much well for a toy you don't want little fingers to get caught in there but it's just to demonstrate for this video um, so do small stitches if you like but to finish it off what I'm going to do is go back into the fold and then go in to the loop of my thread so let's do that one more time so into the fold grab the loop and then pull my needle through like that one more time to so grab the fabric and then pull the needle through the loop 
whoops and then pull your fabric your thread off okay so there we are are you in your box are you in here you go put the lid on put the lid on there you go oh. is she purring like mad when you do that as well 